How's it going, everybody? Chuck Dietz here. First, I wanted to apologize for kind of, like, falling off the face of the earth for a month. Basically, um, I, I'm in three bands now. There's Eternity Lost, there's Circle 7, and now I've joined a third one called Bare Minimum, which is, like, another rock group. It's a unique kind of rock that I'm not used to playing. Um, probably more on that later. Um, but anyway, I've just been working hard. I'm back in school, so I'm going for a master's degree now in digital media, uh, while still trying to hold down all the musical stuff that I'm doing. But I finally got a break, so I'm going to try to get back into the groove of things, answering all my comments and getting up more videos, because, yeah, I'm, I'm just sorry about that. I know I've been slacking, so... I'm trying to make a comeback. Well anyway, now we're finally going back to the Infinity Machine lessons. Today, I'm going to be teaching pretty much the signature lick of the song. This is a big open space, that's where the crazy shred part thing is, and this lick is freaking hard. One, two, three, four. Most likely, it's going to be easy to pick up uh, these runs here. Those little in-betweens. What I want to focus on now is the really crazy arpeggio things. It's very odd picking. It's switching directions all over the place and you're going across three strings. So the first thing that I recommend is that you isolate the right hand all together. So you take your left hand and just mute. We don't need any notes right now. And what you want to do is you want to practice just the picking motion. Start with an up pick and then alternate pick all the way. So it's going to be up, then on the B string down, on the G string up. And then when we come back to the E string, it's going to be down, up, down. So all three picking directions change on the fly. And I recommend practicing that to a metronome. So just using my foot as an example, we're going to play four notes each beat. So it's going to go like this. Ready, go. And what that's going to do is that's going to build your right hand muscle memory so that you can tackle this lick. As you continue on, increase your speed. I heard I had a little slip there. That's why you got to practice. This is, like I said, this is a very weird picking. This is something that I'm not used to. If you get bored of the single note thing, another alternative thing that you could do is practice your triads. If you remember from a couple of my sweep lessons, I went over triads, those three note chords. For example, like a C major. And then do the same exact picking pattern I just showed you. And then you can use any sequence of triads that you want. Like I said, this is just to keep the exercise more interesting. I realize that doing this for an hour is probably going to numb your brain to death. So I might try one, four, five patterns like this. and so on. Once we get the right hand down, it's time to get to the scary left hand stuff. So for this, what I would do since there's basically 
there's three different positions that you're going to be playing arpeggios. One is right down here. Another one is right here. And the third one is an octave of this one, so it's up here. Those are all G majors, by the way. If you remember from a couple lessons back, this riff is A minor, G major, F major, G major, back to A minor. And the crazy arpeggio always comes on the G major. This whole riff is a really big part, and what I like to do with big parts is break them down into segments that I can handle in just little increments at a time. And since the hardest part were those arpeggios, I started with those. All I would do, set up the click track to maybe 80 beats per minute. Might be around there, I think. And then... Just practice exercises like that. Because that's where that comes in. And once I get the arpeggio down, then I work on getting a full fourth, including that running passage. And then I'll speed it up. Next, we're going to move on to the second quarter. Now, I haven't been talking about my hands too much, but if you can, please watch as closely as you can, because I'm using special fingerings for these riffs, and I'm not, I'm not saying them explicitly, but it's very important that you pay attention to where my fingers are going. I'll explain it for the second quarter, that I'm playing these three notes, and then for this one, I'm taking my pinky and hammering it down on the fifth. And then sliding all the way up here. And I'm going to take a little bit of time to explain the fingering for this second arpeggio because this is really tricky. First is going to be these three notes. But when we get here, what I personally like to do, there's two things that I do, and it kind of happens naturally, but figure out what's best for you. I take my pinky, and I hit the top note with that, so I go. And notice that I use my ring finger for that second note on the second time. Like, first time I'm using the middle finger, so it's going to... And then the second. Third note, I just use the middle finger. And go back like that. Woo! The third quarter involves a really jumpy run going right here. Same arpeggio as the last, and then we move to the fourth quarter, which is all the way up here. Excuse me. I messed up again. So, do as I say, not as I do, even though that's probably a horrible thing for me to say. So I just want to thank you guys again for tuning in, watching my lessons, I'm glad that some of you like them and that it's helping you learn my cover. Next week, um, or I'm going to say next time I give a lesson, because next week 
if hopefully I have a video, um, it'll either be my band doing something or I'm still working on a, a new cover. I got Zelda coming up. It's going to be really good. And hopefully I get some sort of video next week. But next lesson, we're going to continue on with this... Um, just going to continue on with this main part of Infinity Maginion. And just keep rocking, guys. See you next week. So here's another trick that works for me, but is completely irrelevant to anything. So if I'm trying to record a guitar part or a video or something, if I just take some time in between each take and I flip my pick and catch it, I'm like, yeah! And then I can start shredding again. And I'm like, man, that kind of sucked, but I got muscles. So then I do it again, catch it, and then I can start shredding again.